rates. Let me give you a little bit more insight on CP and CV, which is the specific heat capacity of this constant pressure process and specific heat capacity of this substance in a constant volume process. Okay, So when do we have these systems or when do we have constant pressure systems? Well, in many life processes we have constant pressure. For example, the ocean is having this pressure, the atmosphere is pushing it downwards. Also the sand is experiencing pressure and you too, if you wanted to, you were here and you got your beer, your beer will be also experiencing the atmospheric pressure. Also when you boil stuff in the kitchen, well, it goes up the way, but the atmosphere is always pushing with one atmosphere. So probably you're asking then everywhere you're going to have a close, uh, a constant pressure system. No, actually, that's not always the case. And actually, in this case, uh, the constant volume, I bring you these tanks. You know, they are metals. And in general, if you are not exposed to ex extreme conditions, they are going to be fixed. Their shapes, their volumes are going to be fixed. So they don't change with time, pressure and temperature. Of course, with temperature, you know, all materials expand a little bit, but we're going to suppose that those are almost zero, okay? So let's say you start heating this tank and the tank is half, and of course it's going to start evaporating, evaporating, but even though the pressure inside the tank, of course, will change, the volume or the total volume will not change, guys. So that's when we will say that the heat added to that system is at constant volume. One other thing probably you didn't notice is that constant pressures were socially or associated with open systems. So let me go back. This is an open system. Water can escape, escape. Water may also evaporate. Solids may go to water, etc. They are open system. Whereas in the constant volume process, we were uh, having generally closed systems. So let me go back. You have this little rigid tank and these storage tanks, etc. They are rigid and they are closed systems. So that's a good, uh, good insight. I don't want you to make the assumption that every constant pressure system is an open system and that every constant volume is a closed system. That is not true at all, but uh, it's a good insight and good. it's good for you to know so you may associate fast, but always analyze, always think. Don't memorize these guys, okay? So probably before, way before when I told you about the internal energy in TD1, block one, I told you that internal energy is used in closed systems to calculate heat, and enthalpy was used in open systems to calculate heat. Now, hopefully you get me guys, because by now you should know that Open systems, uh, if you want to calculate heat, you need to use change on enthalpy. And if you're using a closed system, if you want to calculate heat, you need to use internal and energy changes, okay? And once again, this is a closed system. So this, let's say this, you may, this input does not exist. The output does not exist, it's closed. So this is not, Nothing goes in, nothing goes out, and the open system is here. You may put stuff inside, you may take out stuff. And one important thing I wanted to show you is that normally internal energy, so let's say because it's enthalpy, we have this total requirement of enthalpy or heat, and you will see that you will have U and PV. I like to call U as the internal energy of all this material, and PV as the push energy. They are pushing here and they are pushing here. So the difference is going to be you have internal energy one, internal energy two. The difference on here, you are going to have a change on essentially change on en internal energy and change on PV. And that's what I wanted to show you essentially, guys. It's pretty easy. I see it's pretty easy 
to make the difference between a closed system, which has no input or outputs, and a open system, which do has inlets and outlets. What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.